But yeah. uh, okay, so but if you go back to like 1998, I mean, there was a government program yes. that was very well funded. Yeah, they had five, to go after billion, the sequencing. five billion dollars. We had three hundred million. So they're both big numbers. One's very much bigger than the other. And but you know, like government work projects, they had a you know distributed labor program. Mm -hmm. uh, some people joked early on, you should make prisoners sequence the genome because it's so tedious. Uh, and they broke it down into lots of projects and distributed it around the world. Whereas my approach deals with it all at once and depends on mathematics and computing to reassemble everything. So uh, just very, very different approaches. Uh, but they weren't exactly friendly. You know, They uh, didn't expect anybody to ever enter their domain with their $5 billion federal program. So this uh, was an NIH-driven program. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the only parallel that people born later might you know see is what uh, Elon Musk has done with SpaceX yeah, versus NASA uh, mm -hmm. versus NASA and mm -hmm. now they're working together but uh, you know private companies with smart individuals and great teams can accomplish a lot more than the government can in part just because they have the freedom to go faster and do things that a giant bureaucracy keeps you from doing so I've always kind of believed in this, I would call it an axiom for myself, which has been the only obstacles that are real are the ones that we continue to allow ourselves to imagine yeah. and believe in. And I think maybe that's why bureaucracies don't do as well, because it's not as much on somebody's willpower to kind of fight through those difficult moments. It's like, it's like there was an entrepreneur and a manager. Mm -hmm in companies. I, I work with both and I've been both. And an entrepreneur, you know, they've got to basically put the food on the table and they've got to make sure the money's there for mm -hmm. the company. Whereas the managers like, you know, it's like the difference between the chicken and the pig and making breakfast, which mm -hmm. we probably heard that one before, which is, you know, the difference between the chicken and the pig is the chicken is involved, but the pig is committed, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. If you're going to be having eggs and bacon, yeah. um, and and that's the difference. I think the the private companies that there, have to there's do better kinds of contributions to make. So. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's a, it's definitely a, everyone has their part to play, but there is that having to believe and see things through yeah. that really makes the difference. Just like you holding on to your wheel as the water is all the way up to yeah. your neck, um, I'm sure you had to like think for a moment this could end badly. Yeah. Well, and I thought that all the time with sequencing the human genome. It would have, because it was such a public race, such a, you know, everybody was just so fascinated by getting this information that if my method failed, it would have been the most spectacular flame out in science history. Uh, <laughs> There's no prize for second place in there, this one. There, there was no room for second place, mm -hmm. although. The government created room for themselves. In yes, well, that's place. different. <laughs> and, they, and, and they called it first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but uh, w what I found is when you're a leader and you truly believe in an idea and approach, and and there's very narrow lines. You know, there's there's reality and there's delusions of grandeur. Yeah, and you have to make sure when you have what other people consider a wild, undoable idea that there's a really sound basis for it. And that's where my aphantasia and my understanding of complex systems, I can put things together that don't seem obvious to other people even when it's laid out in front of them. And, but the extraordinary thing that happened is I formed uh, four teams. Uh, we had an algorithm team of top mathematicians mm -hmm. to write this new algorithm. I was just going to ask, how many mathematicians did you have and computer scientists? Yeah, we had a lot of computer scientists because we had a team to build this new uh, $150 million computer. It was the third largest civilian computer in the world wow. at the time. Uh, it was one and a half teraflops. And now you can get a laptop that does that. <laughs> So fortunately, computing has changed a lot. Mm -hmm. But in 1999, there was nothing. 
and this was all based on the alpha chip and putting thousands of them together to be able to run the calculations wow. to assemble the human genome. Mm -hmm. And so the computer could have failed, the algorithms could have failed. We had a team that had to set up robotics to make the 25 million fragments of DNA in a pure form that they could go on uh, the sequencing machines. We had 350 of these uh, roughly $350,000 instruments uh, that were made uh, spe specifically. And the company that made them is the one that put up the $300 million for me. Uh, they thought their machine would work well with my method. But it had a robotic arm, and early on testing them, sometimes the arm would fly off, fly across the room. <laughs> we're, we're lucky people didn't get killed. But I, I put people that I trusted and believed in in charge of each of these four units and they all outperformed even their best imagination of what they thought was possible. They inspired people on their teams to do that. I inspired all of them to do it. And that's why it worked, was because everybody put out at 150% level because they believed in it, they knew where they were making history, and if they put in the effort, they had a chance to make it real. And that doesn't happen with federal programs. That doesn't yeah. happen with make work programs and distributed uh, uh, things uh, for the, you know, raising the science economy. It has to be based on people and them believing in themselves They're and inspiring total individual others. Commitment. And so uh, it was the most extraordinary team. And uh, my friend and Nobel laureate, uh, Ham Smith, who just turned 94, uh, who help make all this possible. He said, the problem is we did it too quickly. We didn't get a chance to enjoy it uh, hmm. because we were, hmm. we were done in a year and a half. Yeah, uh, that was, that's very fast. And, and it was supposed to be a 15-year government project. <laughs> wow. Wow. So, But, but when it worked, it was, it was just unbelievably fantastic. And until the computer run stopped, we had no idea if it worked or not. And so the White House was calling me every day, you know, because they were scheduling the White House event on when our computer actually spit out the human genome. It had nothing to do, the public effort didn't have anything at the time. They were just going along and claiming it was a tie. So the whole event was driven by when our computer at, at Solera actually stopped running and whether it was a genome or not. So it was all scheduled and they would call every day, you know, basically, is it soup yet? <laughs> And uh, it was, uh, you, w we didn't know until uh, the run stopped. You know, it took several weeks of this computer running around the clock uh, 